Today we're going to be solving simultaneous equations through substitution. Mr. McCullough, nice shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, li you like this? Oh yeah, I mean your shirts are always nice, but that is really great. Well, you know, I I'm glad you said that because, you know, being a math teacher, I thought maybe I need to tone it down a little bit. Oh, oh no. no. You really have it going on. Well, thank you. But uh, anyways, today we're going to be solving simultaneous equations through substitution. And as you can see here, we have x equals 5 and down here, and by the way, we've been doing substitution so you're already familiar with it. So we have an x here and rather than graphing this, which as you saw is kind of cumbersome, why don't we just substitute that x for what we know the value of x is, which is 5. Now I know you already know this, but 2x means 2 times x. So if we're going to substitute the 5 in there, it's 2 times 5, which is 10, and 10 minus 3 is 7, and x equals 5, y equals 7, and the solution to our problem is 5, 7. That is the point where those two lines will intersect. Now let's try something a little bit more difficult. Okay, in the first equation, we don't know what x equals, have no idea what x equals. We don't know what y equals. In the second equation, we don't know what x equals. And we don't really know what y equals. That is, we don't have a numerical value for y like we did in our first problem. But we do know what y equals. y equals 3x minus 7. So why don't we take the first equation and right here at y we're going to insert this. Okay, before I substitute it in, I want you to see that I've essentially wrote the same thing down. 2x, 2x, minus 3, and this is our y. I put parentheses there where our y is. Equals 7. The same thing that I have up above here, except now in this parentheses, instead of writing y, I'm going to write what y equals, and y equals 3x minus 7. Good. And you already know how this works. We're going to multiply the parentheses times 3, right? Wrong. We're going to multiply the parentheses times, say it, that's right, negative 3. That means our first term here is going to be negative because it's positive right now. And our second term is negative. So what's negative times negative? That's right, it's going to be positive. So let's multiply all that out. Okay, now let's add our like terms, our two x's over here. There you go, and get the units on the other side. Bring that down. Divide both sides by negative 7. That will isolate our x, and negative 14 over negative 7 is 2. And that is not the answer to this problem. That is the value for x. The answer to this problem is the value for x and the value for y. So let's substitute the value for x into one of the upper equations. Either one, it doesn't matter. You're going to see, and we're going to do this later, you're going to see that it doesn't matter which of those we choose. But I think it's pretty obvious you want to choose the simplest equation. So why don't we choose the second one y equals 3x minus 7. And I want you to look at this. The second equation is exactly what I brought down. y equals 3x minus 7. y equals 3x minus 7. See, I've just repeated myself. Now, I could have brought down the first equation, but I brought down the equation that I think is simplest. But either one works. 
I know I'm repeating myself, but this is really important. Substitution is the heart and soul of math. It's the heart and soul of geometry. When you take geometry, you're going to see that you're substituting all the time. And in algebra, not only do you substitute a lot in algebra, you should substitute more than the books tell you you should. And we're going to go through all that, but for right now, we have x right here, and we know the value of x is 2. So why don't we put a 2 in there? That's right, we had 3x, which is 3 times x. x equals 2, so now it's 3 times 2. Let's multiply that out. 6 minus 7 is negative 1, and the value for x is 2, and the value for y is negative 1. The point of intersection is 2 comma negative 1. And this is one thing I recommend that you do is when you get your answer, substitute them into both equations. Not one equation, but both equations. If you substitute them into both equations and they both come out to be true statements, then you'll know that you have the correct answer. So let's do that. Okay, x was 2, so we substituted that in there. y was negative 1, so we substituted that there. Let's multiply all that out. And is 4 plus 3, 7? Well, you know it is, so that's true. So let's try that in the second equation. Let's substitute in negative 1 and 2 here. Okay, nothing to multiply here. 3 times 2 is 6, and 6 minus 7 is negative 1. That is true, too. So both of those statements are true, and our value is... 2, negative 1, just like we said earlier. Okay, let's try something just a tad more difficult. Okay, in our first example, we had a numeric value for our variable. Uh, whether it's x or whether it's y, it doesn't matter, but it was x, and we had a numeric value for it. In our second example, we knew what y equaled, but it wasn't a numeric value, and then we had to substitute in two terms. And that's fine. But here, we don't know what x is here. It's got a coefficient in front of it, so that's not good. We don't know what y is. It has a coefficient in front of it, so that's not good. This y has a coefficient, so can't use that. And x, we don't know what the value of x is, but it doesn't have a coefficient in front of it, which means if we get rid of this negative 5y, we'll know what the value of x is. Let's do that. Bring all that down, and do me a favor. When you bring it down, could you put the 5y first in front of the 6. Good. And I know I've explained this before, that I'm the only one I know that leaves their x's hanging way out there and they leave these huge spaces here. The reason why I do that, and I know I'm re-explaining myself, but this is really important, is I like the x's in this column coming straight down so that we're not zigzagging back and forth and trying to figure out who added what, blah, blah, blah. The y's in this column come straight down. And since there is no y here, well, we leave that blank. And it also reminds us that there was something here and that we moved it. And of course, well, this should be the units column, but as we've discussed before, we need that y in front of the unit value. So we kind of did a switcheroo there. But anyways, that is the value for x, 5y plus 6. So let's substitute it in to the other equation. Okay, and I want you to see that it brought down the same equation. 3x plus 2y equals 1. 3x plus 2y equals 1, and of course for the x, I'm just leaving a big blank parentheses there. I'm not going to be doing that in the future. 
I'm just doing that for these two examples so you could see what I'm doing and what my methods are. So 3x, what's the value of x? x equals 5y plus 6. So let's put 5y plus 6 in there because that's the value of x. Okay, let's multiply all this out. Before we do, let's look for a negative sign. There's no negative sign here, so we don't have to worry about what's gonna happen in here with the negative sign. We're just gonna multiply everything by three. And we got 15y plus 18. Let's add our like terms. The only like terms are our y's. Let's get the units on the other side. So let's bring all that down. And I tell you what, we're getting pretty low on this board, so why don't we bring it up? Let's see, 18 minus 18 is zero, and one minus 18 is negative 17. And let's uh, divide both sides by 17. And that will isolate our y and negative 17 over 17 is negative one. Y equals negative one. And so let's bring down our simplest equation. Our simplest equation is probably X minus five Y equals six. Y equals negative one. So why don't we insert that negative one right there? Negative five times negative one is positive five. And I'm gonna move the positive five over here. We're gonna subtract negative five from both sides. So I'm gonna bring the positive five over here and it's gonna become a negative five. Again, I've kind of run out of room here, so I hope you don't mind if I skip that step. And six minus five is one. X equals one, Y equals negative one. And so our point of intersection is one negative one and that's the solution to this problem the next problem in the book is a problem where uh, all four variables the x and the y in both equations uh, do not have a coefficient and the problem there is that you can pick any one you want and so we have four good choices in that we only had one good choice in this problem here in the next problem, if you want to do that through the book, it, it's, it's real simple, and so I don't think there's any need to go through that here. But the problem is you have too many good choices. And there are two problems after that that have to deal with parallel lines and perpendicular lines. I'm sorry, they're both parallel lines. And one is there's no solution because the lines are parallel, so they never cross. And one is where it ends up being the same line, so there's an infinite number of solutions. And we went through that in the last lesson, so I don't see any need to go through that again. And the last example is a really good example, and let's go through that right now. Okay, before we had problems where we had the numeric value for the variable, then we had problems where we had the variable and we had a value in terms of y and maybe the units, uh, but in, in terms of two different terms. And then we had to isolate our variable. And now we have a situation where we don't have an isolated variable and we are going to have to isolate our variable. Now we've done that before, and so that's not too hard, but it's picking the right variable to isolate. Now technically, you can isolate any one of these variables and you'll get the correct answer, but let me show you the problem. In this equation up here, if we divide everything by five, we're gonna have five over five, good, 6 over 5, not so good. That's a fraction. It'll work, but it's going to be difficult. And then we have negative 14 over 5. We don't like that. So let's divide everything by 6, and that will isolate this y. But then we're going to have 
you know, 5, 6, X and negative 14 over 6. So that's not good. Well, let's look down here. If we divide this by 4, if we divide everything by 4, that is, we will isolate our Y. 12 over 4 is 3. That's good. And negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. That's not bad, that's not horrible, but let's see what would happen if we isolate x. If we divide x by negative 2, we're going to have negative 2 over negative 2, that's 1, that's good. 4 over negative 2 is going to be negative 2, that's good. And 12 over negative 2 is going to be negative 6, and that's good. So we won't have any fractions if we isolate the x. Again, you can isolate any one of these variables that you want. It's just a matter of what's going to be easiest. And believe me, if you're not dealing with fractions, you already know this, but if you're not dealing with fractions, that is going to be the easiest. So let's take this bottom equation and divide everything by negative 2. And I'm doing that real small so that we won't get too far down on the board. But negative 2 over negative 2, like we already said, isolates that x. And 4 over negative 2 creates a negative 2y, which is what we said before. And 12 over negative 2 creates a negative 6, like we stated previously. And that's good. Now we have a variable without a coefficient, but we still don't know what the value of x is until we remove that negative 2y. Good, and let's bring all that down. And when we bring that down, could you switch the y and the units? Good, x equals 2y minus 6. And so we're going to substitute that in because uh, this is the second equation. Well, it looks different, but it's the same line. It's the same equation. So we're going to substitute this equation into the first equation. So let's bring this equation down. And we have 5x minus 6y equals negative 14. And here we have 5x minus 6y equals negative 14. And I know I said I wouldn't blank out that parentheses again, but we have so much stuff going on here, I thought I'd do it one more time. And I might do that in the future, but here we go, that's x, 5x. What is x equal? 2y minus 6. That's right, just like that. And let's distribute that 5 into the parentheses, and there's no negative value there, so we don't have to worry about distributing a negative. Good, this is getting simpler all the time. And let's add like terms. Let's see, we have 10y minus 6y equals positive 4y, and let's get this units over on the other side and bring all that down. Good, 4y equals 16, and let's divide both sides by 4. And that isolates that y, and 16 over 4 is 4. y equals 4. So let's get rid of uh, all of this work in the middle and we're going to bring down the first equation. This is the answer for the second equation. So let's find out what, uh, what the first equation will be if we substitute y in there. Actually, we can substitute it into either equation. 5x minus 6y equals negative 14. 5x minus 6y equals negative 14, and y equals 4. Good. 5x minus 6y equals negative 14. 5x minus 6y, y equals 4, equals negative 14, so that's good. Let's multiply that out. Negative 24, and let's get that negative 24 on the other side. Bring all that down. Good, 5x equals 10, and I've kind of run out of room to bring anything down, but I think we know that if we divide both sides by 5, x equals 2. And so x equals 2, y equals 4, 
and our point of intersection is positive 2, positive 4, just like that. And if you do your homework, you'll get real good at this. Always do your homework and don't mess around. Do your homework. Get really good at this because this is, this is kind of hard stuff. But it gets real easy the more you do it. And the more you do it, it's like this is the same thing over and over again. Yeah, it is. It is. So make sure you do your homework.